Hi Cornerstone. I hope you're all well and I hope to see you soon. But we have another week of video messages and hopefully we'll be back together after this. You know, it's been so long since we have participated in worship together. So I was hoping that you would just take a moment and join me in just spending some time thanking and praising our Father together. Lord, I, I just, I thank you for who you are, who you are in us and who you are in this world. God, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth and every human being on this planet. You've made us, each and every one, just as you saw fit. And I praise you for that, God. Thank you for the earth that you have made for us. Thank you for all the inventions and ideas that you've placed in the heart of man to create things. Father God, I just, I praise you for who you are. Thank you, God, that you are love. And it's your love that you've placed on the inside of us that enables us to love others, to give freely. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you saw fit to be a part of our lives, that you saw fit to send Jesus so we could be reconnected to you in relationship that you have always longed to have with us. Father, I worship you for who you are. God, you are bigger and you are more love than we could ever imagine. You are the creator of all things that we have ever experienced in this earth. God it is from your lips that they were created. I praise you, Father, and I thank you for making me who I am. I thank you for making my brothers and sisters who they are. And I thank you for putting us together on this earth at this time in the same area so we get to praise and worship you and live together in this thing that we call life. Amen. You know, one thing that I know is that God loves people. God's created us, every single one of us, and he loves us. He loves the very youngest person, the one that's born right now, God loves. And he loves the oldest person who lives on the earth right now. He loves us, each and every one, the same. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Every single one, even the ones that don't know his name, they, he loves them from the beginning of time before their parents existed, their grandparents existed, anyone in their bloodline existed. God loved them. He loves you and he loves me. But you know what? He has called us you and me, his disciples, the salt and light of the earth. You, he called salt and light. In Matthew 5, 13, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? You know, salt is distinct. Um, it has distinct properties and salt even preserves things. Did you know that you are the salt of the earth and you were sent here? God's intention for you is to preserve some things in this world. Salt flavors what it comes in contact with. His intention is for you to flavor someone's life. Have you ever got a nice fresh hot plate of french fries i love french fries but they need salt right have you ever got a plate of fresh hot french fries dipped them in ketchup and they were missing something lots of people would say this needs salt 
as they grab the salt shaker and shake it on. French fries and ketchup just aren't the same without salt on them. They need that, that property that salt has to bring out their flavor and just add that extra something special so we can enjoy it. And you're the salt of the earth. Verse 14, Jesus said, You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, this this was Jesus talking here. And last week, Pastor Paulette's video was about fingerprints. We all have different fingerprints. And one thing that I thought of after listening to her was, you know, even Jesus had his own unique fingerprints. My fingerprints are not like Jesus's. He was his own individual person. I'm my own individual person and you are your own individual person. As much as we may have heard about it growing up in Sunday school, you're not going to look exactly like Jesus. Sure, he was a template. He was the firstborn among many brothers. But you know what? Brothers aren't exactly the same. Even identical twins are different. They share the same DNA and they can share some of the same characteristics. But brothers aren't exactly the same. And just like that, we are not exactly like Jesus. Our life is going to look different. We can um, aspire to have the wonderful qualities that he had, but we're not the same. Verse 15, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Remember, you're the lamp. You're the light of the world. But on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Just like Jesus did. You know, I, I think of it's him who's actually saying this about you and me. And so I think, well, yeah, Jesus is the light of the world. He's the salt of the earth. But he was saying this about you. So he knew that you, uniquely you, provide something to the world that it needs. The world needs a flavor. The world needs a preservative. The world needs light. Just like it says, people don't light a lamp and hide it under a basket. No, they put it on a stand because a light, when they light it, that's what they need. You light a light because it's dark in there. So you are the light of the world and you provide something to this world, to the people around you. It says it gives light to all in the house. You give light to all in your house. Everybody in your world, you flavor that little part of the world and you give light to the darkness around you. The world needs you. You're different. The world needs you to be different. Needs you to be salt and light. You know, God needs you to be different. We really are different. We look different than other people who don't know our Savior like we do. He changes our life. And he puts something on the inside of us that people who don't know him don't have. It's one of those things that you really have to experience it to know that it's something different. To know that, hey, there's something different about me. There's something different going on inside of me where I'm being changed from the inside out. I don't feel the same way that I did, so I don't think the same way that I did, and I don't act the same way I did. 
I look different than I did. And I look different than them. And that's okay. God needs you to be that way. They need you to be that way. We need salt and we need light in our darkness. God created the symphony that you are today. Not only did he knit you together in your mother's womb, but he also brought you through so many different circumstances, situations. He's placed all of these memories in you that have made you the person that you are today. And he's done that so you could give flavor and light to the world around you in the way that only you can. You're a beautiful thing. <laughs> you are. You are a beautiful symphony of different notes and different instruments that come together in a very unique and only you way. And the creator of the universe is the one who wrote your symphony. So you are beautiful, uniquely you, and exactly what you need to be to someone else, to the world. And God needs you to be you in every kind of circumstance in your life. Every kind of circumstance that you could go through, God and the world, all those around you, need you to be you in those. In your good times, in your bad times, on your hardest days, and on those uneventful and smooth sailing days. He needs you to be you with the Christ inside of you. You know, we, we all, sure, we have negative traits and characteristics, mindsets, wrong mindsets, wrong ways of thinking, but we are being transformed and renewed in that. And so as we work those things out, as we become that transformed life, then the good things and the good qualities that he's really created you to be, they come alive and they begin to come out of you. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the you that he needs. He needs the you with Christ living inside of you, the fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit living inside of you and working out all of those negative things into good things, that's what he needs. And you know, just one little thought of one thing that makes us different. As Christ followers, as believers, one thing that makes us different. In Philippians chapter 4, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. This is something that makes us different. Whenever we can come to the place in our Christian walk that we say, in whatever situation I'm in, I've learned to be content. This is something that's different than what the world has. He said, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. You know, we'll quote Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And think about some of the big, wonderful things that we could do in life. And we say, I can accomplish, I can do all things who, through him who strengthens me. And that's true. But that's not the only thing that this verse is true about. What he's really talking about here is he's talking about being in physical need of money and food and saying, I know how to be content and be okay and get along 
when I am in need of money and food and I know how to be great when I have plenty of it. I can be the same in all, any and every circumstance that comes my way, whether I'm doing really good on the outside or things don't look so good for me. It says, I know how to be content in all of those. And you know, one thing I thought about when thinking about this scripture, it's not only being content in the hard times and being content in the great times, but how about being content in the everyday times when there's nothing going on? Not the lowest low and not the highest high, but just middle of the road every day. Can we be content then? All of those times, people are watching us. It's in all of those times that we have the opportunity to be salt and light to the world. People light a lamp and put it on a stand to give light to everyone in the house. Your light is shining at all times in any and every situation. And when, when you have that transformed life that says, I am well, it is well with my soul in every situation, that's when that light really shines. That's when that salt gives the flavor and the preservation that is needed. When other people can look at you and say, wow, they're okay. And if they can be okay in this, then I probably can too. I think I might need to ask them how they did it. You know, we have a special person in our lives who strengthens us from the inside out. He said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The Holy Spirit is living on the inside of us and we have access to him at all times. He's always leading, guiding, comforting, being our standby our realization of this and our use of this grows through relationship and through the process of living with him as he changes and transforms our life. You know, Romans 12, 2 tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Well, that's that process, that relationship. We renew our minds. We change our minds, change the way we think about things because of his work in us and relationship with him, working things out with him. That's what relationship is, isn't it? You have relationship with people. You're in and around them all the time. You're always working things out with them. That transformed life when we're content in every situation, that is what is salt and light to those around us. I just want to encourage you to be that salt and light to your world by finding peace in every situation. He's there. The Prince of Peace abides with you. The Creator of the universe abides with you. He lives on the inside of you. And not only does, I mean, he lives with us, but he lives in us and he works through us. And any and every situation that you can go through, he's there. And he knows the answer to it all because he created all things. So he knows how all things work. And he knows how you work. He knows your wiring. He knows what makes you happy. He knows what makes you sad. He knows what makes you mad. And it doesn't scare him. It doesn't scare him away. You can tell him, I'm mad. And he can say, okay, let's talk about it. 
you know, you can talk to him about everything. And those emotions like that, they're only there to help you figure it out. They're indicators. Okay, this is how I feel about this. Now let's get to the root of the matter. And he's right there at the root already. He knows what that is. And he's ready to take your hand and say, let's cut this down. It's about time we got rid of this one. He's so good like that. You know, I told you, he loves all people, including you and me. And he's ready to work out any and every situation with you to hold your hand in the good times and the bad. And that is what brings that strength up on the inside of us, knowing that we have him right here with us. And every experience like that, that you walk through, you'll remember it next time. You'll remember it more and more and more. And you'll have those times of worship when you can just sit with him and thank him for all of those times that he's walked through with you. He is so good to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being our, our Prince of Peace, our Counselor, our Confidant. Thank you for enabling us, every single one, that there's not a person in the world who couldn't say, I've learned how to be content in any and every situation with you. There is not a person in the world, Father, that you're not willing to work with, that you are not willing to reside in, that you are not willing to come by their side and help them to be a transformed light. There's not a person in the world that you wouldn't say, no, you cannot be the salt of the earth in the light of the world. Every single person you are willing to come along and make them that. I thank you, Father. Cornerstone, be encouraged. Just continue to be salt and light to those around you as you move through every situation of every day, good and bad, and you're well within your soul. That's how you're the salt and the light. Thank you for listening, and I will see you soon. God bless you.